Card Zero, Echoes of the 99, by August Servant, Volume 1. Lecture number one. Your truth is your power, and your lies are your own undoing. All power comes from truth. No power comes from lies. And all weakness comes from not knowing the difference between truth and falsehood. Now follow me here. Spirit is all-powerful, and truth and spirit are one. Where angels are pure spirit, they cannot lie. Where demons are spirit beings, they too cannot lie. But that does not mean that they cannot use their considerable power to do harm to others in a myriad of clever ways. Now then, to err is human, because in being only part spirit, we are thus weak enough to lie and ignorant enough to be deceived. And where no human can make him or herself wise enough to become pure in spirit, they can through the practice of truth, become worthy enough to be born again into a glorified body that is more spirit than flesh. Contrary to popular belief, Lucifer, Satan, cannot lie, for he is indeed pure spirit. However, with that being said, he does not have to reveal the whole truth. Hence the phrase, the devil is in the details. Because where he cannot lie, he can trick. And although even in the practice of his deceptive ways, he is thereby diminished and can never be strong enough to stand before Jehovah God, he still retains a measure of power great enough to be held as the king of demons and a god among men. Now since power, the same as spirit, cannot be created nor destroyed, it is in fact transferable, the same as credit or cash. And this is why we refer to money as currency, because the same as any electrical current, money is power. And just like anyone can become more powerful among men in direct relation to their increase in riches and wealth, Satan becomes more powerfully endowed by deceiving man into trading him a measure of his or her spirit power. And it is in this way that Satan is able to regenerate whatever measure of power lost by his deceptive ways and means. And the cautionary tale here is, any person that aligns him or herself with a liar or a lost cause is like a person covering themselves with blood-sucking leeches, whose fate will be the same. And just as eating nourishing food strengthens the body, honesty and righteousness builds character, strengthens the soul, and adds to the spiritual increase of the person practicing goodness. A piece of scripture comes to mind. Psalms 21.3 for thou prevents him with the blessings of goodness. Thou sets a crown of pure gold upon his head. God plus one is a majority. A person centered or rooted in truth is greater than the masses all lost in the lie. And it is in this context that I ask you to consider the following. There is a power that exists in singularity. And I honestly don't understand why anyone would willingly surrender their own free will to a collective that would only use them as a means to an end, which they themselves are not even privileged enough to know. And while I do understand that there is indeed power in numbers, even all the gods of the ages fell before Jehovah, the one true God. With the moral here being, if you have to stand by others, keep enough distance between you to see truth at all times. And the reason why this is so important is because truth is the ultimate power. 
the only true converter. And the proof of this is that Jehovah did not destroy the other gods. Instead, he possessed and then consumed them, bringing them back into the one. The proof is in the past. It is already well known that one person can move a nation if truth or God be on his or her side. But they must first stand firm within themselves, so rooted in principle or God's law that no group or individual can lead them astray. You see, before love, there must first be truth. For how will you know otherwise? How will you be able to discern the difference between the lie and the falsehood? Therefore, truth or God must come first in all things, if they are to not only endure, but also expand and grow. Ethics trumps etiquette. Because to err is indeed human, the following has to be said. It is never really about what you do, so much as the intent behind your actions. What do you mean? Example one. Sometimes lies are necessary, but there is no such thing as a white lie, for the outcome either serves the greater good or it does not. Example two. Sometimes the truth is not kind, but there is no such thing as a half-truth, for the path is either straight or not. With the moral here being, learn to embrace the fact that the mouth rarely speaks for the heart, because the heart cannot lie, and for some emotions, there simply are no words. Example, I told her, don't tell me what you think. It will benefit me more to know how you feel. Because whether said out of ignorance or not, words spoken in anger or sorrow are always the truest indicator as to what is in the speaker's heart. Furthermore, it would benefit anyone to pay more attention to what is felt, speaking to the feelings of others, than to what is spoken. For while our intelligence may vary, Emotionally, we are equals. In him, we are complete, lacking nothing. There is magic in the world, the same as there is darkness. And for all that lies in between, there is a portion in man designed to face it. With the moral here being, if God the Father truly is all things, then how can the Son be lesser? Or lacking. Therefore, if you can identify it, then you are equal to the task necessary to either apply it or deny it. Salah. The Warrior's Creed. I'm not saying that fighting for God won't involve killing people. It's just that you will sleep better at night having done so. In fact, you might even celebrate a few every now and then. You know, it's funny how people don't even realize that heroes kill far more people than the villains that they destroy. A man kill a man and his life is done, or maybe even declared forfeit and he is put to death by the state. But a cop kill a man and it's just another day at the office, unless it's a really bad man to which he gets a promotion, front page news, and a ton of new followers. God is good, no doubt, but he is also the ultimate badass. And before you call this sentiment hypocritical, it is imperative you understand that it is not our deeds that make us great or condemn us. It is what we stand for, our principles, to be more specific. It's how we move, it's why we breathe, and it's what we take with us from this life into the next. My Creed We are only as good as our desire to serve, the same as we are only as strong as we need to be 
to push through the barriers that keep us from realizing our highest ideals. With the reasoning here being, behind our desire to serve and create is a force that I call righteous power. And this force is literally a wellspring of limitless energy, free to anyone willing to pay the cost of service to attain it. However, there is a catch wherein this power is not something that you take on to yourself. For if it were that easy, the greedy would have stolen it eons ago. You see, righteous power is a summoning that flows into anyone willing to utilize it towards the realization of a greater good so transformative that it can elevate the life experience of an entire nation overnight. And just as in the difference between a mighty river and a stagnant pond, you release this power by sharing it or diminish it with every attempt to keep it all for yourself. Example, the woman in labor refusing to give birth out of a wanting desire to keep the child safe and with her forever versus the woman who dutifully gives birth to a nation. Lastly, as I flex inwardly, preparing to launch myself forward into a world of chaos, competition, and strife, I do so armed and fortified in the firm understanding that my word is my strength, my character is my shield, my wisdom is my weapon, and my Lord God is my power. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Dialogue What's it like to kill someone? I don't know. I generally don't hang around once the threat has stopped moving. It's never crossed my mind to stop and check for a pulse. But that's not what you wanted to hear, was it? Not exactly. Was it wrong of me to ask? No because a good person would want to know beforehand. But a more prepared person would know the answer to the test before it was given. I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. And pray that you never have to find out. But I'm a soldier, and we're at war. Do I really have a choice? <laughs> Not if you want to survive. Okay, why are you making this conversation so hard? Because you need to understand that the dead don't die. They live on as ghosts to haunt us in our memories and dreams. Do I have your attention yet? Yes. Now go on and ask me again about the business of killing. What's it like to kill someone? It's different for everybody. But for me, it depends on how justified the kill. If it's a righteous taking of a life, then all you will feel is relief. If not, all men must die. God wields the hand of cruelty just as easily as he wields the hand of goodness. It's all God's work. But what about evil? What about it? Even the devil is an angel too. With the moral here being, you wrap your head around it any way you have to, to get past it. Because if you don't, then you would have been better off dying with the man you killed. And on that note, are you saved? Okay, I need to hear you say that this is not protocol. Otherwise, everything they taught us was a lie. Listen, the rules exist for those who need guidance. I know what I'm doing. Besides, you can't teach someone how to feel. Isn't that why you came to me in the first place, soldier? God. One. God will do for us only what he can do through us. Two. God don't need our help, so don't fight for him. Love for him. 
Three. God is an immutable presence that can never be erased because there will always be something there to remind the observer. I submit to you, be worthy. Please allow me to introduce myself. You can call me August Servant, and it is a privilege to bring to you my captured Echoes of the 99 by way of Card Zero. The food.